uh, ENT course for undergraduates presented by Dr. Hazem Hamad Abdel Tawab, a consultant and assistant professor of ENT, Head and Neck Surgery, Cairo University. Here we continue uh, the course for the undergraduates and the beginners in ENT by going in the functions of the ear, or in other words, physiology of the ear. Previously, we have discussed the anatomy of the ear in the previous lectures. Uh, today, we are going to discuss the physiology of the ear or the functions of the ear. So, we are going to start from the ear penna, ear penna or the oracle. What is the function of that one? From that picture, you can see that the oracle works as uh, a source for collection of sound waves. So, sound waves are being collected here. Also, there is another important thing is that they are going or it's going to localize the sound. So localization of the sound is so also important by the ear pinna in order to know where is the source from uh, from which direction it comes and localizes the sound to the ear canal. So this is the first thing which is the oracle. The functions will be collection of the sound and localization of the sound. So the second part is the external auditory canal. So what to do with the external auditory canal here? The external auditory canal is working to transmit the sounds, transmission of sounds or sound waves from the oracle here to that tympanic membrane. Another important function, if you're going to just remember with me the previous lectures, is that it works by its angulation to protect the eardrum. Because uh, if you remember, we said that the external auditory canal is not straight canal, it is angulated. And due to that angulation, it protects the eardrum from injury. So this is regards the external auditory canal and the ear penna. The third part, which is the eardrum. So what is the function of the eardrum? In this picture, you can see the sound waves here going in that direction. And then from the tympanic membrane, to the ossicles, malleus, then incus, then stabus, then going to the inner ear. So the eardrum works as what works as a conduction, conduction method to transmit the sounds from the external auditory canal to the ossicles. So it was air, then transmitted that to the bone, then transmitted that to the uh, inner ear fluids from air, bones, and air to the fluids of the inner ear. So, but there is one important thing that we need to discuss to the get together, that the sound waves here, if for example, I'm going to say the intensity is one, the intensity perceived in the inner ear will be 20. Why I should say that and from where came this magnification? And why is this magnification happening? Uh, we are going to discuss now that issue. So going for magnification, I need to remind you with this picture. I guess you know this bicycle very well. It was uh, one of the initials. So what is the function? What is the difference between that big uh, uh, cycle and this another one? Here, for example, if this one rotates one time, it means that this one will rotate more than one time. So it means that one rotation, one single rotation, is magnified to the other one by three, four, five times according to the difference in the size. And why is that? It works as an aerial ratio. It's aerial ratio. Aerial ratio means difference in the surface area between this one and this one. Why I'm getting this picture here? Because if you just look at this picture, you will find this is the surface area of the tympanic membrane. And this is the surface area of the stabis foot plate, which is just covering the oval window. So, for example, if I'm going to mention that this one total surface area is 55 millimeter square, and the effective vibratory area is about two thirds of that. It means 45 millimeters square. To in relation to the surface area of the foot plate of the stabis, which is about 3.2, it means that the difference is about 14 times. Some are saying that we are going to mention the full area. The full area is 55 millimeters square. It means that the, the ratio between the surface area here and the surface area of the stabus is 17 times. In some literature, you will find that the difference is between the effective vibratory area, as I have said here, which is two thirds of the uh, all the surface area. 
it means that the ratio is ranging from 14 to 17 times the surface area of the stabus. It means that if I'm going to give here one sound wave, it means that it's going to be magnified by 14 to 17 times. So this is called the aerial ratio. The aerial ratio. This is one method where we can just magnify the sound waves. There is another mechanism to magnify the sound wave. If you are going to look at these red lines, are they uh, re reminding you of, some, of something? This is the movement of the malleus. This is the movement of the incus type. Okay, let us go for this picture. This picture is the lever. You know, all the lever, if for example, this distance is the same at this distance, it means that forces here and forces here are equal. But if we are going to make that fulcrum in just not in the middle, it means that little force here is needed to elevate that load. Little force here is needed to elevate that load. It means that the distance here, if not equal with this one, it will be giving better force so that we can re, uh, just uh, elevate that load. It will be easier. This is the same in this picture. If you see that any movement here for the handle of the malleus will be transmitted to the incus, but they are not the same. The fulcrum here is not lying in the middle. It's about 1.3 distance, this one, to one. It means that the power here will be magnified to 1.3 here because it will be easier according to the lever action. So the net result of magnification, if we are going to follow that one, the net result of magnification of the area here to the area here, which is the area ratio, and the net result of the lever action, which is 1.3 to 1, you are going to multiply 1.3, multiply 14 to 17. Uh, that we have just mentioned in the aerial ratio. It means that you are going to multiply 1.3 multiplied by 14 to 17. It gives you about 17 to 20 times magnification. It means that the sound wave entering the external canal will be magnified to about 17 to 20 times before going to the inner ear. The question is why? Why I'm going to do this? Why I'm going to compare the area ratio here and the area ratio here? And why my fulcrum is not in the middle? It is 1.3 to 1 means magnification by 1.3 multiplied by the area ratio. Why there is magnification of the sound waves? Here is the thing. Using the air to here is better than using the water. Because water, the sound transmission is less. If we are going to say that the sound waves are going from the excitatory canal containing air to the middle ear containing air and then to the inner ear containing fluid, it means that there will be some resistance for the sound waves making them less heard. So we are going to just magnify the sound. Magnification of the sound will make us compete that resistance. A mechanism is called impedance matching. Impedance means resistance. So you are going to just uh, match the resistance by magnification so that the sound will not be heard less in the inner ear. There is another thing. Please look at this picture. If you are going to follow the sound waves which are coming in the external artery canal and then coming to the tympanic membrane and then to the malleus incus stabus system and then if you remember scala media, scala tympani, scala vestibuli. So the sounds are going to the scala vestibuli, to the helicotrema, and then involving the, the scala media, and then going back to that scala tympani, moving that round window. So this is the oval window, this is the round window. If you remember, I told you before, that inward movement of the oval window will lead to outward movement of the uh, uh, round window, which is closed by the secondary tympanic membrane. Why is that and what is it called? It is called phase difference. Imagine that there is too much sound coming here, sound pressure. In order not to destroy the inner ear and to avoid increase of the in inner ear pressure, there will be like that mechanism. This one is inside, the excess sound will come out. So it means like in order to avoid much increase in the inner ear pressure, 
you need like this one is going inside it means that the excess sound will go outside so this is called the phase difference to avoid inner ear too much increase in the pressure so this is called the impedance matching before and this one is the phase difference so going to the eustachian tube what are the functions of the eustachian tube the eustachian tube either in an infant child or an adult is working to equalize the pressure around the eardrum for example if the eardrum is exposed to atmospheric pressure coming from the external canal and the mid ear containing air as well coming from the eustachian tube it means that the eardrum should the pressure around it should be equal this will go through the eustachian tube and we have mentioned before the conditions in which the eustachian tube opens and closes uh, this is one important function. The other important function is that it is going to drain the middle ear secretions. The middle ear glands are secreting all the time. So all the drainage of the secretions or most of the drainage of the secretions will go through the eustachian tube. So equalization of the pressure around the tympanic membrane and drainage of middle ear secretions. What is the function of the inner ear? The function of the cochlear part, we have mentioned before that the ear is the inner ear is divided into vestibulocochlear nerve so the cochlear part is definitely for hearing while the vestibular part is going to work in the balance in order to do the balance we need to know that uh, important things that for example if you are staying or standing in one bus it is a linear movement so at any time that bus stops you feel yourself going in front and back this is a linear movement linear acceleration the the two sensory end organs responsible for that i have mentioned before are the utricle and the saccule the utricle and the saccule the macula of the utricle and the macula of the saccule in one line okay for example if you are going to just go for a place where there is an angular movement right left up down uh, angle movement it means that this will be presented by the uh, cresta ampullaris the cresta ampullaris of the anterior canal the cresta ampullaris of the lateral canal and the cresta ampullaris of the posterior canal are in three different directions it means that by these three different directions you are going to provide the angular acceleration either linear acceleration or angular acceleration how actually our brain receives the impulses it receives the impulses from the vestibular receptors here the maculae and cresti and also from the proprioceptors about your position and also the visual impulses are so important so the brain receives all these information and then it interprets them and then sends impulses again to the proprioceptors spinal muscles and the eye in order to maintain the balance this was the lecture for the physiology and the functions of the ear i hope you get it well and we are going to discuss more in coming lectures thank you so much